Sweet. Thank you, Charlie. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Can you see me okay? Yep. Cool. All right. Well, that's good for me, bad for y'all. Um, so I wanted to just say thanks to everybody coming to this talk. Um, I'm kind of very, very green in the search world. I joined OSC back at the end of 2019. And uh, I've just started to dip my toes into NLP search. So um, this is a little kind of real life story about that. So the motivation for this talk is uh, everywhere I turn around when I'm reading blogs and stuff, trying to get up to speed, everyone's talking about dense vectors, right? Um, all these fancy uh, schmancy BERT based encoding machines that are really kind of just uh, tearing apart benchmarks left and right. So um, what I wanted to do was try and apply some of that. Um, so this is kind of like the background requirements for what I'm talking about in this talk, kind of the things that made what I'm doing possible um, is this kind of idea of sentence transformers, right? That's not really new. That That's a link. I dropped a link in Slack too, if you guys want to click along. Um, I tried to link out all of the resources that I'm using so you can follow along. Um, I'll touch on data a little bit. I can't really share an example data set, but I'll tell you why in a slide. Um, so the background really is that there's wonderful um, pre-trained models out there designed to get at this idea of sentence similarity or, or meaning inference. And um, Elastic has made some big releases to kind of allow this kind, this kind of data, uh, this new kind of feature to come into Elastic recently. So um, the dense vector release in 7.0, and then really what made it super useful for people is that um, you, you can actually, now they introduced this cosine similarity function. And so cosine similarity really is this, like, just an idea that you're gonna um, find out what's most similar. Um, in terms of angle and distance and, and, and angle in a, in a vector space. Um, so things that should be kind of on the same arc. And the idea is that that would surface uh, ideally like like intentioned or, or like like documents. Um, and so the, the specific application context here for me is the Trek news track. Um, my background before coming to OSC was working in uh, pharma biotech. And when I found out kind of about this conference trek um, as a way to get started in IR, um, I was able to kind of talk a bunch of my OSC colleagues into chaperoning me if we did an entry into it. And so we've decided to go ahead and enter trek, the trek news track for 2020. Um, this is a cool competition hosted every year um, by the NIST up in Gaithersburg, Maryland, right around Washington, DC. Um, it's free to enter. They give you a lot of nice data that's already got some human judgments to go along with it. But when you do enter, you sign some kind of agreements about releasing corpuses and releasing judgments and material because they want to keep the competition, um, you know, open or just like durable going forward. So that's why I can't really share all of the data um, that's involved with this before, but hopefully it gets a flavor for it. And um, you can you can apply this kind of stuff to any any data that you can parse into sentence tokens. Um, and I know probably everyone listening is a better uh, data engineer than I am, so that sh probably won't be the won't be the sticking point for getting NLP embedded into your search. Um, but the the goal here, really, in in terms of the specific track, which is just kind of like um, a sub competition at track, is is given a document. So imagine we're reading we're reading the Washington Post site ourselves. Um, given a document, what what other links should I read to find out more about? Um, that document. Say, I, I want to be able to go a little deeper. I want to understand the background context a little bit. Uh, that That's really the goal of this kind of feature, if you can imagine what it would look like um, downstream when it's actually deployed into their production system. So the, the corpus is made up of roughly 600,000 articles. Um, that, when I pulled it into an index, not the most efficient index ever, right? We're, we're tuning for relevancy here, but um, it was two gigabytes. And then when I added dense vectors, it blew up to 13 gigabytes. So um, I just wanted to kind of call that out in, in the sense of how big some of these dense vector things can get, right? Dense vectors, they're, they're dense for a reason, they're heavy. There's a lot of numbers floating in there. So there better be some bang for your buck in terms of performance, which you're getting out. So like any good experiment, I wanted to set a reasonable baseline um, and the baseline I decided to try and go against for performance is the more like this query um, in Elasticsearch. 
Um, this is really designed for this kind of specific task almost. It doesn't necessarily take into account the background, something that happened in the in the past, right, that would be relevant to an article, but we could accomplish that with another filter. But it does a really good job of honing in on articles that share a lot of tokens. And hopefully uh, that's a lot of kind of meaning similarity too. Um, and I like it, it does really good. It's based on BM25. Um, we know how good BM25 is. And so why not just lean in and see if vectors can kind of how they compare against this. Um, so for doing so for doing embeddings, um, let me see. I have a Slack message. Full screen. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, oh, I think you want to do like this. So um, so for embeddings, uh, I'm only using the title field only. Let me just bounce over and show you guys an example document real quick. Um, so we can just kind of see what what one document will look like. So um, this this is a document in the terms there's kind of a title field. Kicker is the section. Contents is the first paragraph. Contents two, second paragraph. Contents all, all the paragraphs. Um, but I'm only doing the title. And the idea there is that I was just kind of going after um, the the similarity there on one sentence. I'm using this Distilbert model. Apologies for the early switch. This Distilbert model out of this UKP lab, which is a fantastic GitHub repo. If you guys want to learn more about this, I highly recommend starting there. They have lots of great examples. Um, and I want to call out that I'm not doing any fine tuning on this model, right? Um, I'm just getting started with NLP, haven't explored what that would look like. Definitely haven't sat down to label um, the data in terms of this, this model. The model they trained is actually um, designed around inference uh, similarity between sentences. So whether they agree or contradict um, were the labels that they built out to to train this model. So I'd have to do something um, similar to what they did to keep to keep going in that field. I haven't sat down to do it. This is just what you get right off of the download. This is the collab research notebook that I've shared with everyone so you guys can see. It's over here. Um, all things told, it's like 15 little blocks and they're all pretty short from importing everything to fitting the model, to pickling things out so I can use them back in my index. Um, so the, the code is not intimidating. Um, the, I think the concepts and the meaning behind it are still are still intimidating for me, though. Um, so let's talk a little bit about performance. Um, I wanted to kind of jump back into Kibana now so we can go through this. Um, but we start off with kind of just a more like this query against title. And so if this is the document right here, this Lake Braddock's, which is a high school in Northern Virginia. Um, Aaron Hollins, who is a football player. Um, if, if we're trying to find documents most similar to these high school football contexts, let's see, more like this does a pretty good job um, for us off the bat, right? This is already getting um, Lake, Lake Braddock's Natalie Butler um, is another high school athlete for Lake Braddock. Um, Bronco Mendenhall is, is actually, he happens to be a running back. So this phrase has come out of nowhere before. Um, is kind of maybe it's a similar descriptor for running backs. Again, we're hitting Lake Braddock, right? And remember, this is just kind of here, here it's a little crazy where we get into Bernie Sanders has emerged. So as the Donald Trump of the left. So um, this is just running on those tokens at that point. And sure, doing a more like this search in a title field probably doesn't matter. Isn't isn't the best doesn't matter is the wrong thing to say isn't the best way to go about it. You'd like to expand it to maybe be the full document. But just to keep things fair, that's what I'm doing here. Um, so if we if we just do the way the way Elastic has implemented the cosine similarity stuff, it's really kind of just as a script score. So in order to really run it over the entire document, I'm just dropping this match all in. And the idea here is that I've already gone and kind of hand encoded um, the title from this document and stored it here in the params. Um, it's hidden because it's huge. But the idea being that we just use that cosine similarity plus one because all ranking scores have to be greater than zero. Um, but if we do that, we can see the kind of the titles we get back. And this takes a long time, right? It's running over um, all of those documents. And you can see it matches itself, right? Which is good. That means the embeddings are doing the same thing each time they go into the model. Surprise, surprise. Um, and the next the next article, Trump is openly telling us he's above the law. <laughs> Here's his next move. Um, kind of weird to see that slip in there. 
Um, Michael Sam is at least another football player, which is reasonable. Um, at the Navy Yard, there was an accident, uh, or there was a mass shooting, actually, is what that's about, um, unfortunately. And then can immigration reform. And so you see we're getting pretty off topic um, how to clean out their furniture, right? There's a lot of things that um, don't really make a whole lot of sense in terms of the high school football context. So what I wanted to do next is just kind of run embeddings and blend the scores a little bit. Um, and so this is me kind of just tuning by hand, nothing crazy, um, and figuring out a blend there. And so this is this is something kind of similar, but we're getting back towards late Braddock, um, and we are getting a little more diversity than our first just BM25 based search. Um, it's interesting because you see some themes kind of come up in here, like an individual athlete has emerged as one of the sports top people. Um, that comes up there with Jay Beagle. He's an NHL player for the Washington Capitals. Um, this also this also comes up with um, another NHLer, um, Jordan Bennington, and this idea of coming out of nowhere and emerging, you can see is, you know, they're not exactly the same words, but the model is already kind of getting the idea that those are similar English constructs or contexts. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of wrap up there in terms of talking about it because there is some potential, right, for using it to capture the idea. Um, but there is some stuff that still doesn't really make too much sense. And just to give an idea of how good um, the more like this could be, right, we're not using any cosine similarity in this last search, just more like this across the whole document, like I alluded to at the beginning. Um, you see some pretty, pretty solid results coming back. Where this is a football score against their rivals. Um, actually, the guy, we're, the running back we're looking for is in that game. Um, Centerville, which is another school, you know, ramps up. Natalie Butler is a big star for Lake Braddock, so she comes up again. Um, and then this is a basketball from the same school. So you get kind of into these standout stars in, at, at Lake Braddock. And so it's a pretty good search if you want to learn more about sports. Um, at Lake Braddock, right? And that's kind of one of the goals in this thing. So just to recap, MLT query on titles, okay. You know, it starts out pretty good. Um, only title embedding is a little wild. Uh, you get some different themes in there. Um, that are really different, different nouns or subjects, right? We bounce from Trump to Bernie Sanders to NFL players. Um, but, um, and then blending is actually pretty good. You know, I've seen a couple of talks already here. Um, the one that stands out was the Vespa one, kind of talking about hybrid approaches. Um, so that works out pretty well and actually brings some diversity in there. I'm not sure it's really the background task I was looking for. Um, but, and then really just kind of taking advantage of the BM25 power and doing more like this on a, on a broader piece of the document works, works the best. Um, and so that's my talk. Sorry. Thank, well, thanks for listening. Sorry, I ran a little bit over for Doug. Um, but if you guys want to reach out to me at all, please, you can get me on Twitter. You can send me an email. Um, and I'm also on the relevancy Slack. So feel free to reach out if you want to um, talk about title embeddings or any kind of embeddings, because this is something that I think is super fascinating. Um, it's obviously going to be here for a while in search. And I think um, it's probably something when we look back we'll, in, in a couple of years, we'll say, oh, yeah, well, we all had to kind of pick that up a little bit, just like, you know, data science and stuff was over the last five years, you know. So thanks so much for listening. Um, and I'm ready for any questions you guys might have. Fantastic. Thank you, Nate. Um, we've got one question from Slack. Uh, Artem is asking, isn't background, i.e. trying to get more background in the story, more about diversifying the results than more like this? Are you getting more missing parts of the story? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, and the way that the topic's phrased, I think it's kind of, you could interpret it just like you said, which I think is totally fair. Um, based on what we've seen kind of in the relevancy judgments on the past years of Trek and what they've given us to kind of look at as a baseline, it seems like they want something. So if it was, a, it was about Aaron, it might be about his freshman year at school would be an ideal story in their, in their mindset. So it'd be like, imagine a, a ruling before the Supreme Court and they want to kind of watch the progression of a case to how it got there. Um, and, and having that time sense is something I didn't cover, but that has to be, um, that's a big part of what they're defining as relevant too. So, um, Fantastic. Well, we'll see how it goes at Trek. I'm looking forward right, to it. Uh, right. I'll keep you guys up to date. And hopefully I'm going to port all this to a blog post too that's a little more durable with an example data set. So if people um, 
Yeah, for those of you who don't know, track's been around a very long time, and you can go back in time and see some of all of the innovations in IR and search, you know, you know, uh, uh, appearing uh, in track competitions going back decades. So I would encourage you to check it out. It's very much from the academic side of IR, but it's uh, it's where a lot of a lot of search algorithms have cut their teeth rather.